cool. <laughs> I can't tell if we're recording. That's hilarious, Janet E. Johnson. We are, aren't we? Oh, I love when we do fun stuff like that. Hey, Terry Bain here with another fun, exciting episode of Business Growth Time, where it's just the two of us, Janet E. Johnson and myself. Today, the E stands for entrepreneurial-itis. Ooh, mm -hmm. you made up a new word because we've used entrepreneur before, I know I it. Kinda, yeah, it's true, <laughs> I did, I did, you got me, uh, and I own it. Um, but I think we both kind of suffer from entrepreneurial-itis, um, and sometimes we talk about it, and this entire show is geared around the idea of helping entrepreneurs be better entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's kind of, you know, a good word for today. I think so too. And it, Terry even has the E in the middle of his name, just to, just for the whole E entrepreneuritis here we have going on. That's great. If you're, if you're visually watching this, if you're listening, it's just, it's on our little zoom. Terry always has a changed name each time. <laughs> True. It's got to, you know, you got to mix it up a little bit, Janet E. Johnson. Otherwise, what fun is it? Uh, next time I'm going to be Terry T. Bean. <laughs> Terry, Terry, Terry T. Johnson. I don't know. I'm going to mix mine up. What's yeah. Up? See, you don't, you probably don't even know how to change the name. You I, don't even, you're not I even know. Sure. Terry does it every time. It's great. It's great. Well, awesome, Terry. So we're going to talk about some of your expertise. And I mean, I think both of us have the entrepreneur world and we talked with Ty, who Ty Crandall, Crandall, right? Ty Crandall. Yeah. Yep. Cool dude. Wow. Yep. Good show. Learn about business credit from Ty Crandall. It's probably the episode right before this one. If you're, yep. if you're searching. Yep. It, it was really good. And I think it's um, just talking about the naivety of us uh, as entrepreneurs and not knowing just the awareness. I mean, there's so many things I learned along the way doing my business. I mean, the worst thing pro possible was probably the taxes and accounting. Just, it wasn't taught to us. We think, oh, we can, we have this concept. We have this idea. We can launch a business, but there's so many pieces with it. And most of us don't think about business credit. We think we just have to use our own personal credit. So that was a great show was a great show. It's weird that we're spending this show talking about that show, but it's probably relatively top of mind because we're like batch recording for a change. So yep. oh, in the secret lives of Janet and Terry. And yeah, Terry, exactly. Exactly. You know, I know I changed tops, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I knew you were going to, and I purposely just stayed like this. I was like, you know, and throwing it off. You're giving our secrets away now. I Come on now. <laughs> Love it. Hey, you know what? We're open and transparent business professionals. Exactly. We exactly. want our people to know what is up. So I, uh, I wrote this post like, I don't know, four or five years ago. And I say, I don't know, even though the date is August 8th, 2014. So it legitimately is four or five years ago, right in between those two. Yeah. And uh, it was about the 10 things entrepreneurs should have. And at the time, LinkedIn's Pulse was relatively new. That was their blog engine. Oh, it was hot back then. It was mm -hmm. hot. You could, it, like, it was enough to make you stop blogging on yes. your own blog. Because you were like, why? I can't reach this many people. On but my that own. teaches people you need your own blog because you can never count on a platform. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But, but this post in particular was one of the most viewed posts that I'd ever put out. It got well over 10,000 views, um, tons of comments, lots of good insight, and there were really actionable kind of tips that I think entrepreneurs need to know about. And based on the nerve it touched, I think other people feel that same way too. So we're going to talk a little bit about those 10 things that entrepreneurs must have. What do you think of that, Janet E. Johnson? Well, let's hear it. Let me, let's see if I agree or disagree. <laughs> oh, I like it. Um, why is this now? I can't do anything because they need to have business credit. There's number one. We already talked about that. <laughs> Don't right? use your own credit. Use business credit. There it's you go. All, yeah. So there's 0 0.05. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. So Janet E. Johnson, I, you know, and I wrote the post and in the post it says, there's no particular order here, right? Yep. Because this is just how it is. But as soon as I write that, then I say, but like all good things entrepreneurial, 
it starts with an idea, right? You have to have an idea to do sure. something. And it's got to be something that's strong enough and that you're passionate enough that you're willing to trade a large portion of your life for and you're willing to risk potentially a lot better income, at least for a while, um, from working for somebody else. What do you think of that? You got, yeah, I agree. I think I don't have a lot to say on it. I think it's, uh, yeah, you ha I think, I guess I would add to that. Yeah, you need an idea, but you should also validate mm -hmm. that idea before you go jump, you know, especially people that have a job or, you know what I mean? So you just make sure that it's validated because there's a lot of ideas out there, but hard to say if that idea is a good idea and can really make you money. I can't agree with you more. In fact, the article says, not only do you have to conceive an idea worth pursuing, you have to check to make sure others aren't pursuing it too. And if they are, you need to make sure there's either room in the market, hash, or, uh, parentheses, yawn, evidently that idea bores me, or that your <laughs> idea and execution of it is going to kick ass. So I, That's true. Yeah, I and, and there definitely could be other people in the marketplace. That's for sure. It's, it's, uh, it's just, is there room for you and what's going to make yours different? If there aren't other people in the marketplace, it may not be that good of an idea. That's true. So That's good point. Some, something to think yeah. about. Yeah. All right. I agree. So point number two, execute. Right? The, the best Just idea in the do world it. doesn't Just matter. Do it. Exactly. Yep. I agree. So you, my little friend, are pretty good at the execution side. You're a you're a very good uh, getter things done kind of person. What, uh, what do you attribute that to? You're never going to get anywhere unless you actually do something about it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have been known as like kind of a machine when it comes to things because I just, I, I'm all about just taking action and doing it and not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it at a level that's professional. So I think you have to take action. You just, otherwise you won't make any money. You'll go broke and then then what? Then you go back to the job. So you have to execute. And ideas, you know, I think this attributes back to me, for me, back all the way in my 20s where I used to hear the, the guys with the big egos. I did network marketing way back then. And I'd hear the guys with the big egos come in and go, I'm going to kick ass, and blah, blah, blah. And then they would sit and wait and wait for the people to come to them and wait for things to happen. And it's like, wait a minute. What are you waiting for? You have to take action to do it. You know, that's a really interesting point because I think in times I've been guilty of I'm going to post a video or I'm going to share this piece of content or I'm going to write this post and then people will come to me, right? And that doesn't really work. I don't know that it ever really did. Maybe it does at Gary Vaynerchuk's level. Yeah. Um, it yeah. clearly it does at Gary Vaynerchuk's level. Excuse me. I don't want to take that away from him. Um, yeah. It doesn't work at my level. It, it, so it's. Now it's let me add to that though. It doesn't. It doesn't. It be, but the consistency of it can bring you something you down the road. I mean, like sometimes we go, okay, is this podcast? What's this bringing us? What? Is, what's the all these videos we do bringing us? But you know, like, like just the Egypt speaking gig for me, that came randomly because of all the content that I had put out there. So it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do that. But I think if some of a business is looking for sales now, you really have to have a deep strategy on how you're going to bring those in. Um, but I think the content is a feeder that you definitely still should be doing. You know, you make a really good point. I had a conversation with a vice president of sales for a prospect yesterday. Never spoken to him. Well, maybe once. It's not, he's, he remembered me from years ago. So, but he's like, oh, I'm bummed that you answered the phone. I was waiting for the, hey, hey, <laughs> to listen to the, you know, like you start your videos. So people do see your stuff. Yeah. They do yeah. read your stuff and it does leave an impression. So, and it might be a reason they hire you versus not hire you for whatever you're well. looking for. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Super yep. good point. Super good point. All right. So tip number three on this list, passion. 
yeah, there's nothing more to say. You, I guess it kind of leads back to even this morning, I was listening to the podcast, my favorite one, Art of Paid Traffic, and he was talking about your why. So having your why, having passion, uh, knowing what your goals, why you're doing it, I think that all leads to the same thing. At the tail end of the little paragraph on passion, I wrote, you had better be absolutely in love with what you're doing. Otherwise, you won't need to do it for very long. <laughs> it's just, dude, it sucks, right? Being an entrepreneur can be a total pain. It's a drain. It's work. It's effort. There's not a ton of result. There's nobody really there to celebrate the wins with. It's you and the cat. And <laughs> how do you keep yourself uplifted and motivated all the time? Because you're the one that has to. So if you're not in love with what you're doing, yeah. you won't need to be doing it long. So... I like mm -hmm. that one. Yep. All right. The next one is flexibility. Flexibility. And it's really about flexibility in, in your plan, in your You're program. not talking about like putting your leg behind your head or anything? Yeah, this isn't a Wendy <laughs> Pet kind of flexibility <laughs> here. Another great episode in the, in the archives of business growth time. Yeah. But you, uh, yeah. Can you put your leg over your head? No. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. Wait, wait. Let's see, people. Ernie wants to watch Janet put its leg over her leg no, over her head. Yeah, that's been a long time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just, I don't, I, yeah, shit. I like, I can see my toes. I'm happy about that. Um, Flexibility. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. Just the idea that what we start with on our plan and our program and our process isn't always what we end up with, right? In fact, it really rarely is. You know, we talked about the idea of you writing a social media book and what a silly idea that is because it changes every month, every week. Mm -hmm. Yep, doesn't so, make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta be kind of flexible. What do you think about that? I think you absolutely have to be flexible. Um, I think that you you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow in your business. It's your own business. What if you have a big client on the books that you've had for a long time and they fall off, for instance, tomorrow, then what? You have to be flexible to go, okay, I need to do, uh, you, you were doing A and B, but now you have to do C in order to bring the income in. So you do have to shift and you have to know when to shift. There's a lot of things with the flexibility piece. And um, I mean, I've had to be flexible over the, all these years of doing social media because it's changed and it changes and it changes and it changes and it changes and it changes. And if I wasn't flexible and willing to change, I wouldn't have a business anymore. I think that's a really good point. You gotta, you gotta be flexible, man. Bendy, you like that that big air blowy thing outside of the car dealership? <laughs> I was just thinking of the green guy. What's the little horse's name that bends? Oh, oh po like Pokemon? Poke yeah, yeah. No, or not Pokemon, po but poke. Uh, shit. <laughs> Come on. Gumby. 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 Yes. Yeah, and Gumby. Pokey was his horse or his dog. Yes. 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 Yep. Oh, exactly. So gotta be like Gumby. <laughs> Gumby. That's the one. Gumby. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> oh, there's a funny story about that that we're not talking about here today. <laughs> <laughs> um, drive is the next one. Like oh. just motivation to get her done. Mm -hmm. You gotta have it. I mean, Bottom line is we're we going back to what you said. We're doing this for ourselves, mm -hmm. our own. So if we don't have that drive and we don't want to get out of bed in the morning to work, well, we don't have to. Really, I mean, we could lay in bed all day if we felt like and watch Netflix if we really wanted to. You know what I mean? So, um, drive and ambition. If you don't have it, you're not going to make it. Then go get a job. Go get a job. I mean, do, you ever, do you ever do that? Do you ever like just totally say, you know what? I run my own ship. I know I have stuff to do, but damn it, it can wait. And I'm going to lay in bed and watch Netflix or I'm going to go and rollerblade or I'm going to go and. Well, that's different. You need to exercise and like, you know, you do the paddle boarding and I do the exercising, but to lay in bed all day and watch Netflix, I absolutely never have ever, ever done that. Yeah. I mean, even when I'm sick, I will bring in my laptop and put it on my lap in bed. 
you know, so no, I mean, cause I have a major drive and ambition and I just always have, but you know, that's what I'm saying. If you don't have that kind of drive and ambition and you are the type that wants to sit, I mean, I'm granted we can do that on a Saturday maybe or whatever, you know what I mean? But if it's a, I don't, I can't even see a time that I've ever done it, but, but bottom line then you might be a job type personality. I mean, I know you can see it. You can see it from miles away with certain people that they just should really have a job. Well, and that's the thing, right? Because you don't think sh twice about laying around watching Netflix all day when somebody else is paying you. I, yes. and, and I can't, I've never laid around and watched Netflix when I was on my own. If I, it, you know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't mm -hmm. happen. Sick or otherwise, I think you're a hundred percent right. I poof, I remember delivering on a project. I was sick as a dog, but I was in bed and I was like, I got to get this done. No one else is going to do it. So mm -hmm. I yep. drive is key. Um, in the one thing I do want to say that is a great line from my friend, Charlie Wahlberg is start again tomorrow, because there are going to be days when you don't do as great as you could have yeah. done. You, so get back on that horse tomorrow, right? It's, you can start again anytime. And there are days where you just don't feel like, and, and I'm not saying don't have a life, you know, like we were saying, you know, go, you need to rollerblade, you need to spend time with your family. I do watch, I mean, I, my favorite shows are Housewives, any Housewives, you name them almost. <laughs> I mean, I watch that crap, but, you know, we, we have to have a life too. But I, for me, I have a focus time. And if it's that those day hours during the week, I mean, I am working, you know, and then into the weekends, if need be, based on certain projects. So I think it's, um, you do need the life balance too. I mean, I want to add that to it because it, it is, you know, it's a hustle world, but yeah, you need the life balance. You need the life balance because work expands to fill the time allowed, right? You could, you could work for probably 36 hours straight without thinking about it. If you really, yeah, there's down. always something to do always mm -hmm. so much to do. God, mm -hmm. I was thinking about it the other day, just organizing the content that you and I have created and putting it in some meaningful way and making sure it's distributed out through across all the platforms is just like, no, thanks. There's too much. I don't even know there's where to a lot. start. There's a lot. Yeah. You could change your website every day. I mean, there's just so many things that to be done. It's uh, prioritizing and then yeah, taking, taking time to yourself too. Take that time, kid. All right. The next one is selective hearing because ultimately <laughs> the more complex and involved <laughs> your idea, the more people are going to try and talk you out of it. Right? No, there are people uh, in your life that, that don't, like they don't want you to exceed the limits that they put on you. Right. So they're okay. like, you know Got what it. I'm talking about? Yeah. Now I'm getting it. I didn't get it at first. Okay. So for instance, when you're first starting out or where, when you're struggling, there's a lot of people that will say, go get a job. Lots of people say that. Oh mm -hmm. my God. Think about how many times, like uh, if you posted that you started a new position, right. You get all kinds of likes and all kinds of people are super excited for you. You post that you're starting a new company, you don't get quite as many. <laughs> Weird. It is. It is. It's not the normalcy for many. And I know I had certain people in my life, yeah, for a long time, the first few years were for sure just saying, why don't you get a job with good benefits and blah, blah, you know, and it, it's, it's just the mentality of an entrepreneur is the mentality of an entrepreneur. So you really... I guess to add to that, you should hang out with like-minded people so that you can just tune out the, the, the naysayers. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so right here, it says you will run into naysayers. That's, that's <laughs> I'm reading that walk away in the immortal words of Kimberly sweet Brown Wilkins. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> awesome. See, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. It will happen, but if you hang, if you surround yourself with like-minded people, and I mean, there are going to be naysayers still, but it will just help you get through the tough times. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, the next one is mindset, right? You got to have oh, sure. the right attitude and believe that you can achieve what you set out to do. 
And we've had the talk before too, that we get into our own minds. Like for instance, um, I, I've even said this, you know, a few times there, I go, why, why me to run Facebook ads and, and do these courses and do all this stuff when there's the um, Andrea Ball who wrote a book or there's Dennis Yu or there's, you know, Art of Paid Traffic, you know, there's these big names out there doing the same thing I am. So then you go, your mindset goes, oh, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not, but you know what? We all are and there's plenty of room and just because they are big names doesn't mean that I don't know just as much as they do you know so we we have to get into a positive mindset and I think that's going to come with what we just were talking about too is hanging out with people that are like-minded it's it's exactly where it needs to go right and if you want to take that up a level you got to find some sort of mastermind group where mm -hmm. those people are there where they're willing to help you um, not only focus on, on holes in your plan and your business, um, but make suggestions, make connections, um, and then really hold space for you in the universe to help you achieve what you what you believe you can. So it's mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity for her or, or for her for for that to happen. So yep, super yep. cool, super cool. Um, I just kind of did a little sneak preview of the next word and it's plan. It's the idea of putting something together uh, that's actually going to be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. So you can stay kind of consistent. Well, I could even, so I agree. So a plan right here is my plan. See, most people do the whiteboards, but I like, so there's my calendar. Can you kind of okay. see it? I can kind of see yeah. it. Yeah, It's a mess, but it's the plan for my launch to lead into May because in May I launch my, my ads ROI Academy again. So I do it on a monthly basis, but I have the plan of all the items that need to get done in the calendar and by the date that it has to happen. If you don't plan for that, it might never get done and the pieces might not ever get taken care of. So I completely agree that, and you got to plan your whole year out, really. That's just a one sec session, section of it. But what is your plan for the future? What is the plan for the year? You've got to set the goals and make that plan. So do you have that kind of time blocked out? So is that like your actual, this is my calendar for the day so I know what the hell I'm doing? Uh, no, it's the, mine is more, it, because I'm, I'm a crazy person that likes to get things done even before these times. <laughs> you, like, said, you said I got four presentations that I'm working on. They're almost all done. And yeah. went like, and they're well, like three weeks from now. Yeah. So I mean... <laughs> You know, see if you can guess when I'd be doing those presentations. <laughs> well, now, now the last day I probably will perfect them, but I like to get them out of the way. I've been like this ever since even college. They, when one class, a gave, nerd. I know one class gave me the, the whole, and why my kids don't take after me. I don't get it at all. Cause they like to like, wait till the last second. I, it drives me crazy. To wait till the last second. Yeah. But I had, uh, where I had the whole quarter to do it, but she gave you the amount of work at the very beginning. I had it all done within the first 30 days. And then I had the rest of the quarter to, well, I li went to St. Cloud. So you know what I was doing, but <laughs> I, I had some fun, you know, but you know what? The bottom line is, Hey, I got my stuff done early. So the bottom line with that is it's, it's, it's a to-do list based on a date that I want to get it done. If I get it done ahead of time, great. If, if it, that's my goal date. Yeah, so that's how I work. But everybody works in their own way. So I think everybody just needs to plan out their life. Some people live, I mean, live, and mine drives me crazy for their planners. And mine's not even hardly filled because I don't know, I don't live for the planner, but some people live for that planner. But so you've, planners do work really well and you've got to plan ahead. I was, I was a planner guy up until I got like my first Palm Pilot, which was like, you know, 1997, 98. So less of a planner, maybe 99, you know, but Palm Pilot. So I switched to digital like is early. Yeah, I tried to go back to this. I can't handle it. Like I prefer Trello. Yeah, Trello's Trello is solid. Mm -hmm. And there's certain, you know, planning things that you can use for apps and, um, you know but there's certain things that you want to see visually too and write down. So that makes sense. 
Uh, the next one, and we're on number nine, is a support system, which is funny because I already mentioned the idea of a mastermind group, but you got to have friends in the business or you know, maybe find that couple of family members that support your craziness, whatever it is. Accountability partners. Oh, that's a good one. I don't even think that's in here, Janet E. Johnson. You should jump on this post and add that to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the same thing as what you're talking about, but it's, yeah, having that accountability partner. Um, Joanne Funch, who we interviewed a couple times ago, we meet every Monday morning and go through different goals and what we're doing that week to accomplish I mean, we, so every Monday morning, we meet at 8.30 in the morning. I did have a previous mastermind group, um, but then that one, we just kind of went our separate ways. And then Terry, I mean, you and I have kind of spun lots of things off of each other and said, okay, we're going to hold each other accountable. So, I mean, find a couple accountability partners that you can say, hey, hold me solid to this. I am going to do this. Because if you tell somebody else, it's going to make a whole difference compared to if you tell your own brain that you're going to do it yourself. Hat Although, tip to Dale Royal and Jeff Clatterbaugh. But what'd you say? I said hat tip to Dale Royal and Jeff Clatterbaugh for keeping me on track. They're yours. Those okay. Guys are, are fantastic in that role. Um, and, exactly. and it's a necessity, right? Because to your point, if you say you're going to do it, but you don't tell anybody, how does anybody ever know, right? You gotta, you gotta put it out there. My wife is in this, uh, fitness craze right now, man. Her, she's been going to the gym for a few months. Uh, they came out with this March Madness contest and you get points for posting selfies and checking in at the gym. She created an Instagram account that she never had before. And she's going to the gym two or three times a night. She's working out at this gym two or three times a night and posting online because she was like super competitive. I had no idea of any of this. I'm like, who are you and what is going on? And uh, cool, I guess you're getting ready to divorce me. So I, maybe, I, I it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome. She, so, she said, I'm not that lucky. That's not what's happening, but you know, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. That's um, great though. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, there, there's something pushing her to get that, you know, that motivation. To... Accountability partners in the mm -hmm. chat, you yep. know? Yep. So it's, 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 it's important. It works for all the goals and aspects of your life. Um, the last thing I have on my little post here uh, is a wealthy spouse, right? This, is, this would be a great <laughs> I thing. I saw the have. comment. I saw the comment that in your, she's like, if, on her, in Terry's LinkedIn of this post, it said, this gal said, if you could help me with that spouse thing, that'd be great. <laughs> It, right? That's a, <laughs> this is, it, listen, here's what I know for sure. It's going to take way longer than you thought to make this magic happen. It's just, it just does. Um, I've got a dozen really close friends that are all 20 years into the entrepreneurial space. They're all doing fine, but they all thought that four, 10 years into it, that they'd be sold out and doing something else, right? So it's not, it's not necessarily what you think. Um, and it's gonna cost a lot more than you think too. You know, you're talking about how much money you spend on uh, just on Facebook advertising to get people to look at the programs you put out. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, exactly, so. yeah. So it's something that I agree, I mean, Granted, would I work this hard if I had a wealthy spouse? I don't know. <laughs> From the beach. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but I like it. I think that's, uh, it does actually, I, I do see it a lot in my industry too when I coach women and stuff and I see them. I, you can tell sometimes when they're not making money and I'm like, but that yet they're going on all these vacations. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there's something up there. You know, <laughs> they don't, I don't know that they have to work super hard. So yeah, it's, it's a, it, it, it's a benefit, but it actually could be a non-benefit too. That's a, that's a really good point. Cause you're not going to, you're not going to do the work. You know, if you, if, if, if you don't have to be the sole provider, then you're not going to dig yeah. in. With that. The have to, the have to gives you an extra push. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly. Point. That's a good point. Exactly. So, you know, 
Plus and minuses to both sides of things. I think this is a great list. I think we covered most everything. I can't really think of too much. Was there anything in the comments that we missed? Do you happen to have that pulled up that we, I have it pulled up too. I, you know, I could, I could look at the comments. There were, there were a lot, of, uh, there's a fair amount. There's 135. Yeah, you've got quite a few. So yeah, it's a very, but I, the first one I read was if you could help me with the wealthy spouse part, I'd be so grateful. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Jonathan Schwartz said mentors, right? So yeah. I, I think well, that's a, a good comment. And yeah. it's, it's interesting to, to make sure that you look for people that have already kind of been where you want to go and draft from them, right? What can you learn about that? It's kind of cool. That's cool. There's another one. Identify your dream, have courage, make a plan, do not waste time. Excellent article. Like, so that kind of synopsis of what you said. Very good. Yeah. So yeah, it, the realities, yeah, the realities of being an entrepreneur is, you know, we just kind of covered it. There's ups, there's downs. And, you know, we kind of were a little bit, I, I guess I want to finish with, we were a little bit negative almost, but, you know, because there's, there's a lot of hard, but there's also a lot of awesome, you know. Awesome. You know, we're talking about working from our home. I mean, I'm in my basement, my cats, well, my cats are annoying, but you know, bottom line is, you know, we get so much flexibility. We get to do what we want, set our own goals. And you know, there's a lot of fun with it too. Get so. to love what you do, serve the people that you're meant to serve. No, it's listen. And I think it's probably that you're either wired this way or you aren't right. I don't know that this is the path for everybody because most folks probably don't have the stomach for it. It is, yeah. it is difficult. It is stressful, but it's also amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're controlling your own destiny, which is a cool thing too. Yep. So yep. I, yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to discourage anybody. That's a good point. I, I think we both love the entrepreneurial path and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I refer to it as smashing my face into it frequently, <laughs> but <laughs> with nothing but love. <laughs> exactly. No, it's, it's, yeah, you figure it out. You figure it out along the way. Awesome. Well, you can find our past. We have a lot of podcasts on uh, entrepreneurship too. And you can find any of those at businessgrowthtime.com slash podcast. And then also we have a Facebook group, businessgrowthtime.xyz. So we would love to see you in that group and uh, check out our past episodes. If you really liked this interview or any of the past interviews that we did, uh, we would love to have a review on iTunes. We would appreciate that too. Oh, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good day, Ernie.